Hey there folks, PK here, welcome back. So we're gonna try to catch some surf perch today. Uh, it's a little cold, but no choice, it's winter here in Oregon. Um, my usual setup, I have a 10 foot spinning rod, uh, size 4000 reel, and a 20 pound braid line. And for my leader, um, I'm using a 12 pound test mono line. And for my rig, I am using the uh, high-low rig. I now got three hooks on. Uh, these hooks are number two bait holder hooks, and they have a two-ounce weight. And I'm using uh, gold shrimp for uh, bait today. Wow, it's cold. So let's put the bait on and uh, try to catch some perch. Whew, it is cold today. Really, really cold. It's about 33 degrees. When I was walking up that little beach, man, uh, the sand was frozen. I'm not kidding, it was frozen solid. Okay, so the weather for today is looking really good. The high tide is, uh, uh, actually no, it's past high tide. Uh, it's going to be low tide about 8 o'clock, but it's a pretty high low tide. It's like, I think it's three foot something for a low tide, so that's pretty high for a low. Hopefully they're biting today. And people ask me like, okay, when is the best time to catch surf perch? You can catch them year round. There's really like no particular month that's better than another month. I think people tend to fish more in the summer because, just because it's warmer. But you can catch surf perch year round. So we are all baited up. Let's get out there and uh, see if there's any perch out in the surf. Okay. There we go. First cast. Let's do this. Come on, red tail. The swell for today is about four feet, 10 seconds apart, so it's not too bad. There we go, there we go. Oh wow, he was so close. Oh my goodness, he was so close. Ooh, that's a good one, guys. I'm not kidding, he was like 20 feet from me. He is so far up the beach. Awesome, first fish. Looks like a good size. Here we go, here we go, yep. Come to Pappy, woo! Awesome. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, look at that guys. Awesome looking surf perch. He's about maybe 11 and a half inches. Perfect, I'm gonna keep him today. Woo. Okay, here we go. First fish. Pretty good surf perch, good size. There we go. Look at that awesome red tail right there. Perfect eating size right here. So that's the first fish of the day. Hopefully it continues. Want to get about maybe four or five more. That would be awesome. All right. Now because I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bleed it. All right, let's, let's try to get another one. That first fish here, I had to walk a little bit. I made about six casts, nothing, so I moved a little bit and then I got this guy. Usually that's what you gotta do. You gotta be mobile, because uh, they, they move around a lot. Oh, 
Yeah. Wow. Woo. He was close. <laughs> They're not, they don't seem to be very far. I mean, this guy was way up the beach, just like the last fish. See him swimming there. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, there we go, guys. Wow. What a beautiful looking red tail. Awesome. Okay guys, fish number two, a little bit smaller than the last one. It's been kind of a slow morning. Uh, been fishing for about an hour now, only two fish. Definitely a very slow day. I guess the tide is not ideal either. But at least I'm not skunked. Woo. Man, I had to walk pretty far to get that fish. Think about I went about almost a quarter mile down the beach but uh, let's keep on going maybe get a couple more and then uh, that would be successful I consider that success two is not enough a couple more a couple more would be nice and you know what guys uh, these surfers they make good bait too crap bait um, but the thing is you know they taste so good they make really good fish tacos so and see if you want to eat it or want to use it for crab bait. It's up to you, but they make really good crab bait. Uh, the, the problem is when you put it in your crab pot, the seal will tear your pot apart because they want to get after that fish. So I think most people, when they catch these birds, they just like make fish tacos because like I said, they're so delicious. So yeah, let's keep on going. Well guys, it has been a very slow morning. I'm thinking maybe uh, not gonna happen today. I think I might go crabbing tomorrow, so I might just go home early and set up for my crabbing trip because there's really not a whole lot of fish biting right now. Not a whole lot happening. The thing is, uh, I'm fishing an outgoing tide. So, for catching these red tails, you actually want to fish an incoming tide. But sometimes, you know, you don't have a choice. Okay, maybe that's my last cast. Is that my last cast? Come on, red tail. Where are you guys at? All right, well, I think we will just call it a day. Um, really not a whole lot happening right now, guys. Okay, one last cast. One last cast. Been here about two hours, a little bit over two hours now. Two fish. And I don't really want to say when it's this slow. Okay, last cast. Come on, fish. Last cast. Help me out. Okay guys, so that's about it. Uh, definitely a very slow morning. Um, not a whole lot happening. I've been fishing for about two, a little bit over two hours. Only two fish. Uh, that's a nice red tail. And I'm gonna take these home and I'm gonna show you how I uh, cook the surf perch. Um, they're super delicious and they make great fish tacos. But usually I uh, pan fry them so let's go back and um, clean them up and I'll show you how I cook it. All right guys, so we are at home. Here is the fish. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it. Um, I'm gonna start by just scaling it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the uh, uh, fins and um, the dorsal fin as well, the tail, and then the anal fin and the pelvic fin. Um, and then we'll uh, cut off the head. Um, but first, let's go ahead and take the scale off the fish. And to do that, pretty easy. I just get a knife and uh, just kind of go backwards gently. Um, of course, they do sell uh, scalers, but uh, I don't have one. And I've been doing this for a very long time, and it works pretty good. So it, it comes off real easily. And the reason I'm scaling it is because I'm going to marinate it and deep fry it. 
I kind of went about this backward actually. What I normally do first is I cut off all the fins and then I scale it. But it's all right. This way will work. Just remember when you're going like this, guys, uh, these um, fins are they're pretty sharp, especially the dorsal fin. So we'll flip it over and uh, get the other side. Okay, so we got all the scale off. That was pretty quick and easy. And then we're gonna cut off the uh, fins. Um, we got the pelvic fin here. And then we cut off the tail. And then the anal fin and the dorsal. Okay, so I use scissors, super easy, super fast. And then what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna cut the belly and then we're going to cut behind the gill plate and this side as well. Then we're gonna remove the head. So I cut the belly there and then um, I'm just gonna go this way, kind of diagonal. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so just like that. And then we're gonna come behind the back, the neck, and then we're gonna cut that spinal bone. Just like that. All right, so now we can pull the guts out. Okay, so there is the belly cavity. All right, so basically that fish is clean, and the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, in the belly cavity, there's these, uh, there's like black film, see that? Um, I'm not sure what that is, do you guys know? And the easiest way to remove that, I find, is to get some paper towels, and just uh, clean it up, just like that. So, that's how I get rid of that. Okay, um, you really can't get all of it out, but just get like most of it, you'll be okay. Okay, so that's it right there. That perch is all clean, and what we're gonna do is, um, we're just gonna get the knife and try to go over the body again to make sure we got all the scales. And then the other side as well. I think we got everything, okay? All right, so Let's clean this fish up, and again, I just use a paper towel. Of course, you can use running water if you want, but usually the running water doesn't get all the sand out. You, the sand just sticks to the body because of the slime, and I find paper towel works a little bit better. And then you can rinse it off afterward when you're all done. All right, so we rinsed it, and we're gonna, we're gonna like, uh, Dry it with paper towel one last time. Don't want any moisture in there. Get the belly. Okay, so there it is. That perch is nice and clean. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the knife again, and I'm just going to score it. And scoring it just um, lets the flavor go inside the meat better during the marinade. And I do about maybe like a half inch apart. It's like that. Now some people just go one long stripe, uh, one long cut like this. That's fine too. Um, I just do it this way. I've been doing this way for a long time and it works pretty well. So pick your method and uh, go for it. Okay, so that should be good enough right there. It's all scored. And then what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna marinate it. Now for the marinade, you can use anything you want. Uh, soy sauce, fish sauce, uh, salt, sugar, black pepper, whatever. Um, just gonna keep it simple today. I'm gonna use the Louisiana Cajun seasoning. And I'm just gonna lightly sprinkle that seasoning into these little grooves. Okay, so there it is. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm putting a Ziploc bag. And when it's all done, that's what it looks like right there. And put a date on it. 
And I just leave this uh, marinating overnight in the fridge and in the morning we'll pan fry it. Okay, when I start to stir fry my fish, um, I'm gonna put the heat on medium and I'm going to use some olive oil. And when you're stir frying this uh, fish, um, it tends to splatter quite a bit. So you wanna cover your uh, other stove with foil or paper. All right, so the pan is hot and I'm going to drop in the fish. And when you do, um, it's gonna splatter, okay? So just be aware of that. Whoa, just like that. Woo! And then I'm just going to take some foil and cover that up a little bit so the grease doesn't splatter all over. So how long do you cook the fish for? I cook it pretty thorough, guys. These fish have worms in them, and you don't want to eat that, obviously. But once the worms are cooked, they're pretty harmless. So make sure you cook it thoroughly. I would like to brown it on each side. Um, I don't know what the time is. Uh, it varies depending on the size of the fish but I just brown it really well, so it'll kill any parasites inside the meat. All right, after about four minutes, we're gonna turn it over. Just like that, golden brown. And we're gonna cover again for about another four minutes. And that's how brown I want it to be. Um, that's perfect right there. If you want it a little bit lighter, you can do that. Um, just cook long enough. I put it on, I, I start off with medium heat and then I put it on like uh, number three or number four on my stove. And then I just slow cook it for about um, seven to eight minutes per side until it's brown like this. And yep, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time. Have fun fishing, tight lines.